Hi there, this is Carrie from Stamp with CT. Happy Wednesday and happy Facebook Live Day. We are excited to be here with you today. I've got Dale. He is waving. That's just his thing, isn't it? And Oliver, of course. So we're just going to look right quick. I've got Got Dale's phone so I can try to keep up a little bit with comments today so it looks like we're positioned pretty good don't yeah, you think yeah. so we will wait just a moment and see if Facebook will shine upon us today and send out some notifications that's always lovely when they do that if not if you are watching the replay then we are so super glad to have you watch the replay too we may want to tilt it down just a little bit unless you want to work. No, I'll work up there. Work up there. Okay. We'll just stick with this then. So if you're watching this part of the video, as I usually say, you're probably catching the replay. So be sure to type in replay so we know you stopped by. And then that also, of course, enters you for a chance to win the weekly door prize that we do. We like to do that as a thank you for supporting my business. It really does help us on social media when you share and you send up those hearts and thumbs up and you comment. It just helps us reach more friends and more crafters. Okay, can you think of any um, announcements that we have, Dale? Um, I know we have bonus days, and I, it starts today. So it is July the 5th. So bonus days, the way that works, during July, for every $50 that you spend, Stampin' Up! will reward you with a $5 coupon that you can redeem in August. So that's awesome, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You can collect as many of those as you want and redeem those for whatever products you would like in August. So that's always a great deal. And then we do have new, <clears throat> excuse me, online exclusives. So if you go to my online store at stampwithct.stampinup.net, you will see the new online exclusives there. There is something else that I am missing. It will come to me, I bet. Okay, let's get started with our project. We've got a couple friends hopping on. If you'll say hello, we would appreciate it. I see Mary is with us. Good morning, Mary. Glad to see you this morning. All right, let's get started, Dee. Right. You want to tell just a little bit about the products that we're using today? I promised a supremely awesome card. Uh-oh. So the, we're going to use the supremely awesome uh, stamp set. And we're pairing it with the uh, Countryside Corners dies. <clears throat> and because this image, you're a Luigi guy. <laughs> we'll have to tell the story <laughs> about that. Uh, he needs some color, so. Good morning, we got, Donna. We got some blends out. Okay, so we wanna show that card a little bit closer now. We um, made a card for a swap with a sweet friend of ours, Sharon McNeely. She is the swap coordinator and she does such a fabulous job. And she messaged me and loved our little card that we made with um, Luigi. So she had a little pizza place when she was younger that she went to, I think it was called Luigi's and it made her think of that pizza place. So now we call this guy Luigi. So we were just really drawn to this stamp set. It's just so cute. And you may think, do I really need a pizza stamp set in my collection? But yes, you do. So today we're gonna make a card that Dale kind of came up with. I think, I have never seen this fun fold before that he's doing. So you wanna show him how it works well, Dale? I'm gonna show him from the side to start with. <clears throat> and this just kind of makes the card up trying to make the card stand up and display some. And so, you can, I don't know how much you can see right there, but on this, it gives you a, quite a bit more to make it stand up and make your image 
kind of a more, out. more of a pop-up style. And I was, it was just trying to play with some stuff and trying to come up with a reasonable way to make one that just displayed well. So it kind of is a matchbook style card, but then it also pops up. So y'all help us name this. We were calling it a matchbook. What are we calling it? Matchbook. Uh, we don't know. Matchbook style <laughs> display card. I, I don't uh, know. Matchbook pop-up card. Good morning, Cheryl and Joanne. Glad y'all are here with us. And Donna. So anyway, this is what we're making today. We'll show you how to do it. And you already showed the products, Dale. Uh, I think no. it was a pretty quick show, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Go uh, ahead and hand me that and get that out of the way. Okay. And we'll get started. All so right. first thing we're going to need is a piece of thick basic white cardstock that is 11 by 4 and a quarter. And I do have the measurements already posted for you because I think you're going to want to make one of these cards. Okay. Um. And you're scoring at. I'm gonna score it. I'm gonna score it at one inch, and then because I, I know, I use this side to score from on the small measurements, and so I'm gonna score it at one inch, and then I'm gonna flip him over and put him at six and a half and then that will leave you the uh, Six and a half. One inch and six and a half. One inch and six and a half. Right? Yes. Okay. And then using the bone folder, of course, to get that all creased that'll, nicely. That'll make it disappear depending on how you uh, decorate it with uh, if you decorate with DSP or if you what do you mean disappear. Well this seam. Oh, your seam? Yeah, okay. your seam pretty much disappears. Okay. And then... Uh, so that's kind of the matchbook look that we were talking about. Right. Okay, you gonna yeah. do some stamping next? I'm a, yes, I will. Alright. Um, go ahead. Ooh. What? Ah. Uh, lost track of where my ink was. That can happen in this craft room. I bet Joanne is watching with Diane. She's up in Michigan. All right. And then You're going to stamp that right across the bottom. Right across what we decided. The bottom, yeah. So we're making a little bit of an adjustment to the card. Ooh, if I, let me see if I can mess it all up. That's, that's what you do when you're on camera, right? That's what happens when you're on camera, is what I find. Do you do good? No, it looks like it did pretty good. Okay. If you'll set that on your chamois, then uh -huh. you don't have a catastrophe later. Okay. All right. All right. And then we've got another piece. So this one's going to be a little bit different than the first one, right? We've been, uh -huh. We're going to put a sentiment. Sometimes when you make your sample or your prototype, you come up with some different ideas. Uh -huh. That's the way we want that. Now let's take the uh, this one. What? All right. Now we're stamping a random pattern, right? Okay. And oh. So my... can we truly stamp a random pattern? No. No. Our eye really wants us to make it symmetrical so that can be a struggle sometimes so a little trick is to stamp on the diagonal we're just putting some little pizza slices and making our own background because there's no pizza DSP what I know good morning Diane so we're just stamping diagonally down that piece of cardstock okay. and you can 
go off the edge. I actually think that looks good when you do that. And then go back to the other way. Mm -hmm. Then you just kind of fill in. Then you don't end up with a piece in the center that's naked. It wouldn't really matter probably since your focal image is there on this card. But this is just a good way to stamp randomly. And less is more when you're doing something like this. Oh. <laughs> Don't stop me. I'm having too much fun. Keep on stamping then. Okay. Don't clean your, your pizza stamp yet because oh. we're also going to stamp our envelope this time. Okay. Okay. And you may still meet, need your silicone craft sheet for this. So I've got a large post-it note, and what I usually do, Dale, is put it on the front of the envelope, so you're kind of masking off the front, and that way, as you open up the flap to stamp on, you don't end up getting ink on the front of your envelope. Okay. Trying to get it down to where, and then do the same diagonal? Mm-hmm. That's what I do. And there's a couple sizes of pizza slice in this set. So you've got some options. trouble with your phone not cooperating there we go okay you got your pizzas stamped on there no. yeah now you can put your stamp over there to clean okay and then you're going to stamp luigi okay got a lot of stamping going on put that right there Go over. There it is. With the, I prefer. Come up in the camera. Uh, there you go. Prefer what? The to bring my ink pad to the stamp. When it's a larger stamp like that. Yeah, and like on this guy, sometimes is hair and his mustache don't fill in and so it gives me a chance to uh, see that the ink's on the stamp completely. Okay, that's a good tip. It's much easier to handle that ink pad than that large stamp block. Um, Turning sideways. We, we might need to do a second one. That's okay. And this might be just a little bit longer video than usual because there will be coloring. Pretty good? Well, pretty good. It's still a little bit of... We'll, we'll fix it. Okay. Oh, good. You're covering your stamp pad, so that's good. But you know I like to live dangerous. I know. Okay, so now uh, we kind of need to get organized, don't we? Right. Let's move your envelope out of the way so it's okay. it's out of your way. And you could go ahead and adhere your red, your poppy parade piece okay. onto your card base so you've got those paired up. Okay. That way Luigi is drying too because when you use Memento Tuxedo Black, you want to give it a little bit of time to dry. We're so used to using our Stampin' Up! Classic ink and it dries really quickly so just give that memento a minute to dry so it doesn't smear. And then I, I did not do very well on the dot dot not a lot but uh, I did put it in the corners and I try to keep the sides open so that I can uh, not get glue all over my fingers. Good plan. And then, uh, that'll make 
Thank you. Okay. That's just a cute way to make a background. Okay. All right, you ready to start coloring? Sure. Let's get the. Uh, I'll leave this. Yeah, just put that right over there. All right. The, uh, one of the things that I used in this one and then a card that we made for a swap was I used the bronze to kind of color the pizza board as though it is a board and it just kind of gives it a deeper color. Okay. And then that just gives me a little bit of uh, contrast on it and then, uh, yeah so some real-time coloring so if you enjoy watching coloring they can't fast forward can they no not not on the live video on the replay <laughs> they can <laughs> and then uh, oh, I said we'd fix his hair so I'm gonna take a uh, a dark basic black and uh, whoop that was Um, is that bullet tip? Yeah. Well, no, I'm taking the brush tip and just kind of brushing in some where the where the stamp may have not filled in completely. Okay. Because he needs really dark sideburns. He needs really dark shoes. And you could do that with your stamp and write markers as well. And then I'm gonna use a, oh one other thing I did was uh, on the outside edge of his leg out here I kind of put up like a darker stripe down the side. Uniform top. Okay. And then, then I came in and gave him some uh, poppy parade pants. I generally start with the uh, lighter and go to the darker color of marker. Color of the other. Okay, because they come in a two pack. Each color has a light and a dark marker, which makes it so nice and so easy for the blending. I think that's one of the great things about Stampin' Blends is that you don't have to worry about that if that work's been done for you and you just grab the, your light and your dark and then you're able to blend those and get some shadows. And the reason for that is, is in watercolors, your white is your only white, the, your background, your paper, your it's the only white you have. And so you try to start with the light colors and leave some spots to give it shine. That's the part I have trouble with. The color is hat. And of course you don't have to even color this image. I've seen lots of projects with him just stamped or you could stamp on colored cardstock if you're not a big fan of coloring. Ooh, you could stamp it in pieces and paper pieces. You could. make you want pizza? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all tell us what your favorite kind of pizza is. Like pepperoni. Supreme. Veggie, supreme. Just like with pizza, so many options. You've got so many options when you're coloring, too, don't you? Oh, yeah. 
I did get out of the, I'm glad you grabbed the color lifter. Cause I did run over a little bit on this. If you go out of the line, there's a marker called a color lifter. But remember, we're gonna fussy cut this, so don't oh, stress about it. That's true. <clears throat> so there's a color lifter that helps kind of push that color Oh, Donna says, ham and pineapple. Mm. That sounds good. There was a show the other day, and the guy was grilling the pineapple before he put it on the pizza. So, that sounded pretty good to me. We usually do pepperoni or supreme, don't we? Yeah. Although, if you've ever been to Domino's um, and gotten their barbecue chicken pizza, it is delicious. I think it's called Memphis Barbecue Chicken. So today, that is definitely a supreme pizza, isn't it? That he mm, has? No, it's a pepperoni. Pepperoni? Okay. Oh, yeah. I needed to... Uh, Color your pepperoni? Yeah. And with those alcohol markers, be sure that you're protecting your workspace, your work surface, because the alcohol can bleed through, which is part of using an alcohol marker. So, and Dale's just using a light touch. That ink really flows from those markers. So you want to protect the little nibs on your markers, not crush those fibers, so that you've got a nice point to work with and I think the key is just taking your time right yeah what color are you using this um, is for the, the for the skin Donna Linder Th those th this one is uh, 500 and the other one is 700 it's those uh, the natural tone. the natural tones and then knock on the pizza in the middle of the pizza out here I'm gonna put him all in ivory to kind of give him uh, just uh, we don't really have a quiet a mozzarella color yeah <laughs> yeah the the natural tone blends came out about a year ago, and so um, instead of the names of the colors, it has the numbers from darker to lighter. And then I use a little pumpkin pie on the edge out here just to kind of... And Cheryl says she likes ham and mushroom. Oh, I, I can understand. You could go with that, oh, yeah. you? Uh, Canadian bacon, I mean that. Uh, I'm not real particular on my pizza. When the kids were younger, one of their favorite things to do for birthdays was to make um, homemade pizza, have friends over, and they would call it decorating their own pizza. Let's go back and put these uh, uh, pepperonis in. Okay. And you're using Poppy Parade for that? Yes. Itchy. Oliver, come here, babe. Put a little darker. Put, darken up a little of them. So he just kind of comes to life, doesn't he? Luigi. Yep. Uh, we need to. Need some color in his apron. Okay. Many years ago now, like what, 35-ish, um, we had some friends that lived in Naples, Italy, when we lived in Germany, and so we were able to travel and visit them. And I think Shane was maybe seven or so, and I believe that we were there about two weeks, and Shane ate pizza most every day that we were there. 
And pizza in Italy is a very thin crust and you fold it over when you're eating it. It's a very different experience, but it's delicious. And those brick, is it brick fired oven? Is that brick, wood fired brick yeah, oven. Yeah, wood fired brick oven, so cool. Almost done, huh? Mm -hmm. Let me go back in and make this belt black. Okay. And then you're going to fussy cut him out? Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. And of course, if you're not a fan of fussy cutting, you can always die cut. There's not a, a die set that coordinates with this stamp set, but there are other dies, you know, larger dies that you can use to cut that whole image out. But we just thought it would be cute to fussy cut this guy and pop him up on the card, give it just a little bit more dimension. There's some really cute sentiments in this set as well. Absolutely. I don't talk much when I color in. You cut. don't? No. Okay. And I'm probably not very well in the... No, I think you're doing fine. So I like this one. You've got a pizza, my heart. That's cute, isn't it? The one that we used... Uh, you are supremely awesome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. And together we make a deluxe combo. We are using this stamp set in bingo. We're doing an in-person bingo on Saturday, the 29th of July. And of course, it'll be a pizza party too. So if you're interested in that, the registration is open. And I'm a little bit running late sending out my email for July. The kids were here this weekend and then just with the holiday, just running behind, but I'll get that out hopefully today, and you'll know about um, a little bit more of the specifics, the details for bingo, and then we also have stamp class. I think it's the 15th. Mm -hmm. Not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday, and we're using Fresh as a Daisy. Which has some really cool dyes with it, really pretty paper, so that's stamp class. And then, like I said, bonus days. Love bonus days. Like on this, I just kind of try to move the paper to the scissors instead of the scissors moving the scissors around. That's the way I do it. You're moving the paper versus the scissors? Yeah. Okay. I have heard that's a good tip. And you are pretty good at fussy cutting. Yeah. I know several people have one of the scan and cuts, so that would be that would be awesome too. Mm -hmm. Just stamp your images and cut them out that way. That is on my wish list, just so you know. Oh, I did not know that. You didn't? The, and, and this image is because it's got all the lines on it. The scan and cut would do real good on this this style image because mm -hmm. on those some of those images.
switches that are on your DSP that doesn't, the white areas. Or the lines don't connect. Yeah. I know sometimes LaDonna will use a pencil and connect them. I think I'd go back and erase it, right? Yeah, who wants to do that? Turned out cute. Sorry, this is taking a little bit, a little bit of the time. You know, you kind of have to take your time with this. So, if we gave a disclaimer. This would be a little bit longer video. I think it's worth it. To get these markers out of your way. Well, I'm probably going to use I'm probably okay. going to. There's a couple. If I got any really big white spots from where I left a little extra paper, I'll probably just use the marker to color it and kind of cover it up a little bit. That's my game plan. Okay. Joanne says, no fussy cutting. <laughs> cutting. Sometimes you just got to, though. Yeah, we we just wanted to show you options. Like, we have the one cut with the die from the countryside. Yeah, but countryside you, corners die to get yeah. the focal image. And, um, but a couple of places he's... Uh, a little tight on that, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, you cut it, you cut off a little bit of the edge of the pizza, you cut off, which is fine. And at least this way, he'll uh, we'll have uh, we'll have him standing up. You're going to have to tell us what uh, shenanigans you and Diane are up to. I'm going to try. Cut out this little spot right here. be watching too we're gonna to put out a little just a quick tip video about putting your labels on your stamp sets the red rubber come with labels for the clean mount stamps and Dale's got a couple tips on how to put those on because you really get one shot at it don't you yep because if you if you try to take them off like I have in the past, you can actually tear your stamps. So you want to try to get pretty close the first time. Okay, you about ready to put him on? I'm ready to put him on. Yeah, okay, let me have let's some. move uh, that out of the way. You got your card base over there. I do. I need to buy <coughs> Need what? I need to put the car base pieces together. Okay. 
Well, today, Joanne and Diane are resting. Oh. For more shenanigans, probably. Hmm. How do you say that? <laughs> oh, I'll do what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a piece of chair tape. Oliver knows the video should be over. We're normally done by now. I've been doing wedding stuff, it looks like. Uh -oh. That's exciting. What you need? I just need, I'll put tuna tape on there. So I can position this guy. This little stronger adhesive. Yeah, position okay. this right here and make it stick down. Neat. Oh, some Mitchells? They're right there. Right here. It's coming together well. use and take the pick. I always forget that. I need to be better about that. Did you drop him? I dropped him. It's okay. Super cute. And then now I'm going to flip him over and put a piece on the back that I have on the little piece on the back. Do you have one the glue dots. Do you want to use a glue dot or do you want to use a dimensional? I'm going to use a dimensional because the minis. It, you know, a couple of the minis just to kind of get it to stand up a little bit. And that's just your little stop to hold it where it displays well. Right. Okay. And so, and so it's just a little scrap. You didn't cut that out of anything or... Nope, just a scrap. And then just put that across the... Pull that in. down to you just All a right. tiny bit so they put can see. Up here, just near the top, so that when this comes up and that tries to fall down... It catches. It catches. He's not wanting to catch. Okay, well, we'll work on it in just a minute. Go ahead right. and show that other one propped up and right. bring that towards you just a little bit. All right. And where's our other card? Right mm, here. Right here. So that's our two versions of the card. Maybe I didn't. Increases enough. Yeah, that always makes a difference. Super cute to be able to display it. There we go. I love that. What? Yeah, like that. There you okay. go. 
Okay, that's a super cute card. And remember, we need help naming this card, unless you've seen it before. But we're kind of thinking matchbook pop-up or matchbook display card. It's really fun. And Luigi is absolutely adorable. Okay, you want to move those over and we'll show we have one more sample. And this is the card I told you about at the very beginning that we made for a swap with other demonstrators. You want to bring it a little bit closer, Dee? And yeah. we were going for kind of that pizza, pizza parlor kind of look where Luigi is looking out the window as he prepares a delicious pizza for you. So you've got a pizza in my heart. Super cute. All right, let's show a piece of Happy Mail we got from Lisa Tweedle. It is a gorgeous card. So you know we love receiving cards from y'all. So thank you, Lisa. You made our day. It's very, very pretty. And then I've got the prize from last week. It is a chamois, simply chamois. And it is going out to Louise Hilger. So thank you, Louise, for your comment. Thank you for watching the video last week. If you will message me and let me know your address, we can get that in the mail to you. And then this week, we've got a package of the basic rhinestone jewels as our prize. So leave a comment, send up a heart, let us know your favorite kind of pizza or how you um, think Dale did on his coloring. I think it was supremely awesome, Dale. It was really good. Um, just any comment will enter you for a chance to win the door prize for this week, and we will announce the winner of those um, beautiful rhinestones next week. Okay, I think that's it for today. Oliver gets a T-R-E-A-T when we're done, so we will talk with y'all later. Thanks so much.